Oh, hi guys. It is a blissfully cool, cloudy, rainy day <coughs> here in the drought-stricken paradise of the Green Mountains in Vermont. Here in the end times, and that would be Saturday morning, July 14th, the day after Friday the 13th. So I'm just doing what I do every Friday, every Saturday morning before I go pack up my gas-sucking truck to find out what my next adventure in my crumbling life holds. Uh, and that is, of course, to bring you my doomsday headlines where I simply go on the mainstream media <coughs> to find out the various ways the planet is is just just heading just heading down the fucking toilet here. Well, I need to find my right pair of good God my old man 99 cent glasses from China. All right, uh, let's start with this one. <coughs> yep. U.S. expected to become world's top oil producer next year. All right, we are neck and neck with our friends over in Russia. And so sometime in the next few months, U.S. will be number one the number one oil producer on the planet. No shit, Sherlock. The U.S. has now nosed ahead of Saudi Arabia and is on pace to surpass Russia to become the world's biggest oil producer for the first time in more than four decades. The latest forecast from the U.S. Energy Information Administration predicts that U.S output will grow next year to 11.8 million barrels per day. DDD and right next to that story, while the IEA is making that prediction, it's also making this prediction. World's oil cushion could be stretched to the limit, IEA warns. The world's oil supply cushion could be stretched to the limit due to prolonged outages, supporting prices, and threatening demand growth, the International Energy Agency said on Thursday. Um, there you go. Uh, the Global Energy Watchdog said dis the disruptions underscored the pressure on global supplies as the world's spare oil production capacity cushion might be stretched to the limit. Hmm. Okay, what is the latest on this unadulterated horseshit uh, plastic straw uh, corporate greenwashing being led by Starbucks. Wow. Why those compostable, compostable straws may not be as green as you think. Hmm. Companies around the world have earned praise in recent weeks after announcing plans to switch to compostable straws and utensils in an effort to help curb waste. Starbucks pledge last week was among the largest. Blah, blah, blah. That may sound like a planetary victory, but unless there are more places to compost these materials. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Those measures will not have as large of an effect as many might think. No shit, Sherlock. 
Okay, from corporate greenwashing, unadulterated horseshit, let's go to a couple of photo essays here on the mainstream media. Here is Grim Space Photo Shows the Horror of Demolishing Forest. Yes, while orbiting some 250 miles above Madagascar this week, International Space Ast Space Station astron <laughs> astronaut Ricky Arnold captured a grim picture of the island's decimated land. Madagascar's forest have been nearly logged to death with nearly 90% of its forest destroyed in the last century. No shit, Sherlock. From the shithole country of Madagascar, from tragic photos to sobering photos as we head to the Arctic, sobering photos show baby polar bears playing with plastic on Arctic Island, tragic photos taken on a remote Arctic Island show two young polar bear cubs playing with and chewing on a large sheet of black plastic <clears throat> as their mother looks away. Siblings were spotted on Svalbard, a Norwegian island about 600 miles away from the North Pole. La, da, da. Let's come back to our own <clears throat> shithole country, to the shithole state of North Dakota. Groups sue North Dakota over oil refinery near National Park. Three environmental groups are suing North Dakota over an air quality permit that allows construction of a new $800 million oil refinery about three miles from Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Yes, uh, saying that the proposed Davis refinery uh, would be a major source of pollution and will negatively impact the park. Hmm, going, countering assertions from uh, North Dakota that no problem with building an $800 million oil refinery next to a national park. Okay, let's go down to the shithole country of Chile, where, wow, Chile fishermen race to recapture escaped salmon that could pose risk. No shit, Sherlock. Chilean fishermen were working to recover hundreds of thousands of farmed salmon that escaped from a fish farm as environmentalists warned of possible risks if they are eaten by humans, blah, blah, blah. A storm on July 6th damaged nine enclosures at Marine Harvest Punta Redonda Center, freeing at least 600,000 salmon into the wild. So far, they have captured about 30,000 of them. Oh, God. Uh, environmental damage is assumed. This is Estefiana Gonzalez from Greenpeace. Quote, it is a potential environmental disaster of which consequences for the area 
are yet to be seen and could be very serious. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, what's next? Let's go from the shithole country of <clears throat> Chile to the shithole country of Greenland. Huge iceberg off Greenland sparks flooding fears. A massive iceberg drifting off Greenland has triggered fears of flooding if it breaks up, leading authorities to evacuate a high-risk zone. Authorities have urged residents of Inyarsut Island uh, to move away from the shore over fears that the 300 foot high iceberg could swamp the area. Jesus. Anyway, do we need any more? What is the next sign of the end times? From good old U.S. News and World Report, drought creates a perfect storm for wildfires in the U.S. West. No shit, Sherlock. <clears throat> Bigger and more explosive wildfires are raging across the U.S. With the area burned in Colorado already four times the size of last year's total as rising temperatures, drought, and a buildup of forest fuel supercharge blazes. So far this year, 3.3 million acres have already burned in U.S. forest. Uh, and last year was the second worst year on record with 10 million acres uh, blanketed. Blah, blah, blah. They go through all these figures. What is driving the wildfires? Is exceptional drought conditions in large areas of Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado, as severe droughts are becoming more frequent. Do you think so? Meanwhile, nearly all of California faces abnormally dry or drought conditions. No shit, so by August, the risk of large wildfires will be uh, at normal levels, but risk in, in the south and some parts of the area, but risk levels will remain above normal in California through October. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, there will be plenty more of that from our own shithole country to the shithole country of Argentina. Hmm. Drought hit Argentine corn crop may keep shrinking, straining global supplies. The estimate for Argentina's drought hit corn crop may be cut even further from the 32 million tons currently expected to be harvested this season. A reduced Argentine crop would squeeze global supplies of the feed grain to levels not seen in at least four years. So, of course, what we're talking about, this corn is not being grown for human consumption. It is to feed livestock from Argentina to Europe. Droughts set to cause late damage to EU rapeseed crop. Rapeseed, is that the same as canola oil? 
droughts, frost, and other unfavorable conditions are expected to cause damage to the European Union's rapeseed harvest, cutting output in leading producers Germany, France, and Poland. Uh, anyway, and Brother Max sent me some story from Finland uh, talking about the same basic story from the shithole continent of Europe to the shithole country of Colombia. Did you realize that Colombia even had any glaciers? Well, uh, it won't in a few more years as climate change is wreaking havoc with Colombia's remaining glaciers. No shit, Sherlock. Climate change has helped melt away nearly a fifth of Colombia's mountaintop glacier cover in just the last seven years. The surface area of its six glaciers has shrunk from 45 square kilometers in 2010 to 37 square kilometers in 2017. There you go. As the countdown continues, well, maybe what I've been thinking is are black clouds here in New England are actually uh, is actually wildfire smoke from Siberia. I like to thank Sister Sandy from sending me the Siberian Times concern over raging wildfires as smoke from Siberia crosses Alaska and Canada reaching New England. Yes. Uh, as the taiga is burning and sacred bears are being driven out of their natural habitats towards human settlements where they are shot as danger to people. Latest reports show 27 fires raging across the taiga. Uh, and dramatic new pictures show the latest infernos as reports come from the U.S. that wildfire smoke from Siberia has blown some 5,000 miles into New England. This comes as clouds are being spiked with chemicals to provoke rain to extinguish the flames. All amid claims from environmentalists that the scale of the fires has been hidden by authorities. No shit, Sherlock. And while we're over there at the uh, Siberian Times, we have blood-colored rain in the Arctic, a biblical plague, the apocalypse, that is exactly what it is. Here is Arctic River turns red again two years after pollution problems supposedly fixed. Here we have mass death of herring on Shakalin Island. Natural causes or oil and gas exploitation. Yes. Anyway, from Siberia to where are we going to go next? Let's go over there to the shithole country of Japan. Looking for doom and gloom. Japan struggles to restore water to flood-hit towns 
Municipal workers in Japan struggled on Friday to restore water supplies a week after floods caused by a record downpour killed more than 200 people. Communities that grappled with rising floodwaters last week now find themselves battling scorching summer temperatures well above 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit as foul-smelling garbage piles up in mud-splattered streets. Hmm where more than 200,000 households in the city of Kuryashiki households have gone without water for more than a week. There you go. Okay. What was the real reason that Donald Trump w was... Uh, you know, talking about Germany and these other countries over there in Europe uh, being uh, controlled by, what, what was his term? I can't remember, being slaves to Russia or whatever. Uh, here is the real reason. U.S. pitches Europe its gas as alternative to Russia's. No shit. U.S. Energy Secretary Rick Perry urged European nations Thursday to boost their imports of American liquefied natural gas as an alternative to building new pipelines to Russia. Hmm. When President Donald Trump came out swinging against the pipeline, at, at some new pipeline at the NATO summit, he accused Germany of selling itself and its allies out to Russian influence. There you go. So, instead of being dependent on Russia, why don't you just be dependent on the U.S. for your fossil fuels? Now, this next story... Uh, is the one story I listened uh, yesterday for four straight uninterrupted hours. I listened to NPR to find one story that I would uh, that I would be talking about today, and NPR gave this story about one minute and four hours being the only article. Uh, that I heard mentioned, uh, the only story in four hours uh, that I decided to offer here, this is Time Magazine's uh, version of the story from the shithole country of Kenya. Eight endangered black rhinos just died after a botched relocation effort. Who needs poachers when you've got rhino huggers? Eight critically endangered black rhinos are dead in Kenya following an attempt to move them to a national park from the capital to a national park hundreds of kilometers away, the government said. Friday, calling the toll unprecedented in more than a decade of such transfers. And I, I listening to NPR, I jumped to the Im immediate conclusion that what they were talking about is that these rhinos actually died in transport. But what apparently has happened, they're still trying to figure out, is that they were moved successfully to to their new home but once they got there preliminary investigations point to salt poisoning as the newly arrived rhinos tr tried to adapt to saltier water in their new home 
and 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 I don't even want to know what all that means. Uh, we will probably hear more about the saltier water showing up in uh, in sub-Saharan African national parks. What the hell that's really all about. Now, since I probably will not be doing a, uh, a roundup on Monday morning, since I'm going to be staying with one of the heads of the Austin Optimist Club <clears throat> on Monday, and I don't want to be outed, uh, I'll just give you my stock tip for the day. <coughs> this would be Lockheed Martin Corporation as to ways to make money in the end times. No shit, Sherlock. This is from U.S. News and World Report. A defense industry juggernaut, Lockheed Martin Corporation, has made plenty of defense industry investors wealthy over the past decades making its bones in the global security, defense, and aerospace market. The company is coming off multiple contracts with the Pentagon worth billions. Hmm, do you think so? Recent history has been kind to Lockheed Martin investors as the corporation has consistently provided good share price growth during the last several years thanks to robust global demand for its products, solid strategic initiatives, and strong company growth. Anybody wanting to make money off the collapse of a planet, no shit Sherlock, put your money into Lockheed Martin Corporation. Okay. Hmm. Let's go over there to the clueless morons. Half of Americans trying to lose weight. Half of the adults in the United States are trying to lose weight, according to a study published Thursday. Uh, let's see. Nearly 40% of the U.S. population was, was considered obese in 2015 to 2016, a figure which rises to 70% of the U.S. population if it includes those that are considered overweight. The study found that the most common methods of losing weight, successful efforts for losing weight, were exercising more and eating less food. No shit, Sherlock. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyway, from fat asses, let's go over from our own shithole country to the increasingly obese shithole country of China, uh, talking about the, the latest uh, environmental protest being shut down by the authorities in China. This is uh, this guy from calling himself Nut Brother, an artist known for advocacy work on environmental uh, and social issues, trying to draw attention to the water pollution uh, crisis in China and being running afoul of the authorities. Hmm. The pro his project now threatens to become another casualty of China's increasingly 
tight control on freedom of expression under President Xi Jinping, now dictator for life, Chinese authorities are quick to censor anything they consider potentially politically sensitive or stoking social discontent, pushing instead for artistic works that spread, quote, positive energy. So it comes as little surprise that officials would seek to shut down Nut Brothers' work, which seeks to highlight environmental concerns and the ever-growing gap between China's rich and poor. Yep, from the shithole country of China back to the shithole country of Argentina, big petroleum projects in Argentina face tiny challenge, a lizard. A tiny but critically endangered lizard in Argentina's extensive Vaca Muerta, which I think means dead cow petroleum field, could pose a major challenge to energy companies planning multi-million dollar investments in the area. From that unadulterated horseshit to this one, <clears throat> which I've mentioned before, the desperate race to save melting glaciers with blankets. That was yes, let's just put some blankets over the melting glaciers. Let's go over to the shithole planet of Mars, where we see NASA may have burned best proof of life on Mars by accident over 40 years ago. After NASA, <coughs> after NASA scientists announced that they found the building blocks for life on Mars in June, some reason, oops, the computer just ate my story, but anyway, what they're talking about is, uh, so, they found this shit 40 years ago, but inadvertently burned up the evidence for life on Mars. From the shithole planet of Mars to the shithole country of Mexico, controversial shopping mall partly collapses in Mexico City. Uh, this is a brand new shopping mall. A newly opened shopping mall uh, in Mexico City collapsed Thursday after structural problems had led the mall's operators to quickly evacuate. So no injuries were reported. Yes. A uh, restaurant worker, Juan Hernandez, said people in the mall were evacuated only about five minutes before the disaster. Yes, and some of it fell onto a major freeway, which had also been closed shortly before the collapse from the shit all country of uh, Mexico to the shit all state of Oregon, where the Oregon Zoo in Portland is giving their otters ice baths to help them beat the heat, where it is, I guess it's up in the 90s. In, uh, in Oregon this week, but we're going to wind up where I used to wind up every Saturday morning when I did my clueless moron roundup rant 
with none other than Kylie Jenner, author of How to Save the Planet by Kylie Jenner. Probably sales of Kylie's book, Kylie Jenner Saves the Planet, has led to this unadulterated horseshit headline making the rounds all over the mainstream media today. Kylie Jenner set to become the youngest self-made billionaire ever. Yes, so what is this all about? <clears throat> Kylie Jenner is reportedly on her way to becoming, quote, the youngest self-made, that's really like that, close quote, billionaire ever, according to projections by Forbes. She is now... There, Forbes is claiming that Kylie, the, how old is Kylie, 20 years old? I think she's 20. It would have been real nice if they had told us. Anyway, she's somewhere 20 to 22 in that era. In that era. She's now worth $900 million, and so they have actually created a GoFundMe campaign. I don't think Kylie has, but Kylie's fans have created a brand new GoFundMe campaign to help Kylie become, you know, to help raise, help Kylie raise the last $100 million that she needs to become the youngest self-made billionaire ever. Kylie Jenner, for, for, for anybody uh, unaware of this, Kylie Jenner is not a self-made billionaire. Kylie Jenner will be made a billionaire out of the millions, the millions of clueless fucking morons. Uh, make, making this clueless fucking little cunt a, a, a billionaire. Uh, you, you know, we are completely, totally fucked. Every single person who has ever uh, give, given that fucking uh, clueless little twat one penny of their money uh, deserves everything that is coming down on this planet. Anyway, let's all wish Kylie luck in getting $100 million dollars and her new GoFundMe campaign. Speaking of which, I think I need to make a new GoFundMe campaign to see if I can raise some money to fix uh, my rotten fucking teeth falling out of my face because I haven't been to the fucking dentist in almost 10 years uh, since going down this goddamn rabbit hole. Goddamn teeth fall out of my fucking head. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up because I have to go repack my gas-sucking truck, put all the shit back in it that I pulled out of it so I could cross the uh, Canadian border without being uh, stopped at the border and being accused of living out of my truck. All you can do is laugh. We are so fucked. Bye, guys. <clears throat>